Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing good. In today's video, we are going to be talking about atomic habits and what I learned from it. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. Atomic Habits is written by James Clear and it was published in 2018 and it belongs to self-improvement, self-help genre. There are a plethora of self-help books or self-improvement books or whatever you call it and we all know that there is a really thin line between a good self-help book and a bad self-help book. But what makes Atomic Habits different from a lot of self-help books that I have read is the fact that it's written in a really practical way. It's written with a practical approach in the sense that there is theory in it, but at the same time the author has taken his time to really guide us as to how we can attain good habits and how we can refrain ourselves from developing bad habits or even get them out of our system. So one more thing that I really really like about this book is the fact that each chapter begins with a bad story. So it tells us about someone or someone's success story with the tactic the author is going to tell us in that chapter. And what it does is it makes the tactic or the approach that the writer is going to talk about more achievable. It makes us understand or it makes our mind understand the fact that if that person has done it successfully, then we would be able to do it as well. And I really like this feature or this act of teaching and just transferring knowledge to the audience by sharing a bank story or sharing a success story so that it makes it, it humanizes the tactic in the sense that it teaches us that okay if someone has done it then we will be able to do it as well if they have been successful with it we can be successful with it as well because success stories have a totally another spot in our brains i guess because whenever we see someone doing something and when we see that they are having good results with it we instantly want to incorporate those things in our lives and i think that the author has hit the mark with that now coming towards the actual content of the book the book is actually based on four attributes i would say or four things that our habits are based on number one is cue number two is craving number three is response and number four is reward and the author says that our habits are constantly in loop with these attributes so james clear basically tries to make us understand how habits are formed and what is the process of forming habits so he says that there is always a cue that is in our surrounding that makes us do what we do we are constantly doing something that is a part of our habits we are always in the loop of habits you know our brain is constantly working and trying to find certain clues in the surrounding through that it can trigger our brains into doing something that it has already learned which is a already pre-learned habit now this is the basic of the entire book but now let's move on to the few things that i learned and i really really like the way james clear has talked about those things in the book number one is the compound effect the author is trying to tell us that when we think of making changes we always think about these big changes that we want to make for example youtube when we look at people's subscribers we see those subscribers as this big number and we don't even think about it but we are like sort of trained into thinking with the fact that okay this person has this many subscribers and we instantly think that they had an overnight success but we what we don't really understand and what we don't really realize is the fact that there were so many small steps that they took before reaching this point so the author primarily tells us that there are really small tiny changes that happens which lead us to our bigger goal the ultimate destination that we wanted to. The author says never disregard tiny changes or tiny steps or tiny whatever because in the long run when you look at it and you when you combine all of those things, when you combine all the tiny changes and all the tiny efforts, they make a huge difference. So one thing that the author constantly reminds us to do is to improve 1% every single day so that by the end of the year it will make a huge difference. Number two is the four laws that the author talks about. The four laws are basically based on the four attributes of habit making, the cue, craving, response and reward. So these four attributes are the basis or the fundamental blocks of the four laws that the author has talked about in the book and the book is pretty much 
divided into these four laws. The first law that is based on cue says make it obvious. The second law that is based on craving says make it attractive. The third law is based on response and it is make it easy. And the fourth law which is based on reward is make it satisfied. So these are the four laws that the author talks about throughout the entire book and each big section of the book is dedicated to these four laws separately. The next thing that I want to talk about is identity shift and I think that it's really important because <clears throat> you can aspire to change but when you actually be the change that's when you start the process. So instead of saying that I want to do that say I am that. So I will give you example of eating healthy. Instead of saying I am going to eat healthy from next week say I eat healthy full stop period. There is nothing after that. You eat healthy and that's it. And by saying this, you are making the statement a part of your personality, a part of your identity. And that's when things will start happening. And one more thing the author talks about is measuring or keeping track of your habits, especially in the beginning. It's really important. Anyone of you who has worked out or who has decided to start eating healthy, you know how it's important to keep track of your workouts or to keep track of how many calories you have eaten and all that because we know that if we don't track it in the beginning we it's really easy to slip up and it's really easy to let go of things just like that with habits as well you have to keep track of them to, in order to be accountable to yourself and also to be really persistent and also to keep track of what you're doing and one more thing that i really liked and the author has talked about it in the book is habit stacking so the concept is that when you are doing something or when you are introducing some new habit in your life, you do it by stacking habits. And how this is going to go is you are going to stack your new habit with an already pre-learned habit. And that's pretty much it. There is so much that I could talk about about this book. But obviously, we will be talking about this all day long and all night long. And we don't have that much time so i just gave you a really brief summary of the book and obviously I'll, i missed a lot of things so you will have to read the book in order to get the full essence of the book and at the end of the day what we learn and what we apply in our life it really matters and if you are just ingesting things and not applying them in your life and not taking benefit of it then it wouldn't really matter you know it wouldn't really make a difference. So whatever you ingest, make sure to apply it in your life as well. And with that note, we have come to the end of this video. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And also make sure to follow me on my socials if you haven't already. You can also subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my content. And I will see you guys really soon, inshallah. Till then, take care. God bless you. Assalamu alaikum. Bye.